do have another very distinguished guest that uh, is going to talk to us a little bit about the Libertarian Party and why Libertarians make a difference. And that is our National Executive Director of the Libertarian Party. He's here from Washington, D.C. And uh, he is a great Libertarian, he's done great things to grow the party in Texas and has been involved uh, in, in many organizational areas and getting candidates and has run as a candidate himself and uh, was my, always my favorite person on the Libertarian National Committee. So I'm going to introduce Wes Benedict, who's a Michigan man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's nice to be back in Michigan. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, John and Emily Salfit for donating their frequent flyer miles to bring me from Washington, D.C. Uh, out to here. Uh, I know the economy in Michigan is not doing too well. The economy of the Libertarian Party is challenged sometimes, and so um, I'm not out there uh, flying around the country uh, spending Libertarian Party donations um, unwisely. I, I, we do try and treat your money uh, if, with respect and, and use it wisely. And that is one thing I want to talk about this evening is how uh, the Libertarian Party, despite having just a small amount of resources, uh, does make a big impact. Um, but first, before I forget, I don't, uh, I don't know if Emily told you, uh, Mr. Lipman, but um, I, I first came to Michigan, actually I came in 1995, uh, I was a manufacturing engineer at 3M. Uh, in 96, I decided to get an MBA and uh, an engineering graduate degree at the University of Michigan. And uh, at, at, at the very first day, it was the first day of orientation, uh, I went and they divide you up into sections. There's like 400 people in the, in the, in the class, in the MBA class and they divide you up into sections. I was in section one, and at my table, which was a table about this size, uh, I sat next to Dan Littman, which was your son. So, <laughs> um, I, you know, I thought he was kind of nice and seemed rational, more rational than the rest of the folks at the table, and uh, I didn't know he was a libertarian at that time, and I didn't know I was a libertarian at that time, although I was getting real close uh, but anyway, I, I did find that out um, shortly after. In fact, um, when you go into business school, it's all this management stuff, and they get you to take some time and, and think about your life and where do you want to be in five years or ten years and what's important and what are you going to do about uh, uh, taking care of the world and the environment and all these things. And so I did some thinking like that. and. Um, I, I'm not going to tell you all the things that were on my list, but uh, so making a lot of money was one of them, and I, I was going that route. But uh, the another one was I wanted to get involved in politics and, and, and change things, because I'd spent so much time uh, late nights drinking beer, uh, arguing with friends who disagreed with me up till 2, 3 in the morning, bothering the neighbors, and despite all those hours over many years, you know, I've never changed my mind. My friend never changed his, his mind, or you know, the, the other few folks never changed their minds. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm here to a school to learn about business and management and how to grow things. And I've been successful at other places. Um, I've got to find a way to change minds. You know, more than zero every five years. Uh, yeah, I need to get involved. So. Um, that's, I'm like, and, and, and I, I admit I had been a Republican in the past, and, and I wasn't a Libertarian Republican. I was a real Republican. I was a conservative Republican. Um, the Republican Party didn't leave me. Uh, I left the Republican Party because I, I opened my mind up, and, I, and I, I learned about things besides just economics and small government and trade, and, uh, you know, I started learning things about civil liberties and being free and, you know, I used to hear someone complain about the Vietnam War. I'm like, oh, that's those, uh, those stupid liberals. And I, you know, I shut my mind down like a good Republican would. And, but, then, you know, so I, you know we, we were about to go into the war in, in uh, Kosovo, or we had just gotten into it. And, you know, there's Republicans and Democrats saying maybe we shouldn't be doing those things. We shouldn't be policing the world. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of opened my mind up to some of those issues. Um, but I think it was like the first week... At, at, at Michigan, 
uh, the first week of real school, I was going across campus and I stopped and I saw a booth. They had this world's smallest political quiz and it was a libertarian booth and James Hudler was there working the table <laughs> and I took the world's smallest political quiz and I don't think I got 100 to 100 but I think I got like 90 100 or 80 100 I mean I was up there and uh, it was I had just barely heard of the libertarians before that and uh, so anyway I took that quiz I'm like wow and, and I think I still have it somewhere and so I, I, I went and volunteered. I didn't do much at all other than argue with my classmates for the next few years. I went to a couple of meetings, maybe one of yours, um, a couple of uh, student libertarian meetings, uh, and didn't really get uh, active until after that when I, I graduated and moved to, to Georgia. I was in Cobb County, and I kind of got active there. Later moved to Austin, Texas, had a business, sold it, had some time on my hands, volunteered a little bit for the party. We had a petition drive coming up. Our party was in terrible shape in Texas. Um, we, it used to be a real good one, a great one. Um, I, I, I wanted to recruit volunteers for this petition drive, and so I sent an email out to all of the county chairs listed on our website. I'm like, well, that's 80,000 signatures, that's easy, or 45,000 valid signatures, that's easy. I'll just email all the 70 chairs and ask them each to get 1,000 or get their county to get 1,000, and we'll have our signatures easy as pie. Um, I don't know if y'all have had to do petition drives in, in ever. Or, uh, it's like that everyone says that too. It's like, oh, it'll be easy. You know, we'll just do that and everyone will go out and get them. It's so easy. Well, I, I emailed those 70 people. My AOL froze my email account because half of those emails bounced. We had a website with uh, obsolete county chair's names. Their emails were no good. That, that didn't stop me, though. I picked up the phone and tried dialing them. A lot of the phones were disconnected. Uh, they did, you know, they, so, uh, you know, and, and yet we're still running candidates and getting votes in Texas, you know, we, we, despite having all this false, outdated information on our website. So, you know, that's the one thing I did in the business that I had was I found a, I, in, in the year 2000, a couple friends and I uh, had a business that was very poorly run. It's like, well, if this is doing poorly and it's surviving, imagine if you fix things up. Uh, do things uh, more professionally, clean things up, organize them. You know how much better can you do? Uh, you know if, if you're surviving, then you can make tons of profit by fixing it up. Well, um, that's you know that's the approach I took with the Libertarian Party of Texas. It's like the more broken things there are, and yet it's existing, uh, the more optimistic I am because I know those things are easy to fix and can be fixed. Uh, and after getting that petition drive done, that's. Uh, I actually spent I spent six months volunteered uh, as a volunteer on a petition drive in, in 2004 or planning for it 2003 and in 2004 I sold a business had time and money on my hands I paid my own way to travel around Texas it just seemed like something I had to do no one else was doing it and I was sitting there available it's like you know if I don't do this uh, you know it, I'm, I'm here and I can do it, it how, how can I complain about what happens to the Libertarian Party or their country or whatever if I'm just sitting there right there ready and able to do something and can do it. Uh, so we got on the, on the, back on the ballot. Uh, in that year, I think we had 73 candidates in the state of Texas. The following year, I wanted to focus on candidate recruitment, and that's what, that's what I did, fundraising, candidate recruitment, fixing up all those uh, stupid problems, and we got 168 candidates to run for office. Uh, to get on the ballot, and um, that was a huge improvement. Morale went up, and I know that Michigan has had a lot of candidates, and I, I, I'm not here to tell you what to do or how to do things. Y'all are doing a great job. You've got a room full of people. That's actually rare around the country for people to have a state convention or a major event where there's this many people. 